Hi everyone, let's talk about Fermat's Little Theorem in Modular Arithmetic. Just to be clear, this is not Fermat's Last Theorem, which talks about uh, solutions to the Diophantine equation a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n, which just might be the hardest math problem that has ever been solved. It took 350 years, I believe. Uh, so it's not this thing. But it is a nice result, this Fermat's Little Theorem, and we're going to be exploring it. In fact, it's a special case of Euler's congruence. So I have another video on that. Uh, but just as a reminder, what it says is that if n is greater than or equal to 2 is an integer, and GCD of a and n is equal to 1, then we have a to the phi of n is congruent to 1 mod n. Now, what is the case, the special case of this when n is prime? Let's say it's a prime p. Well, in that case, phi of n is phi of p, which is p minus 1 by a standard computation, because in essence, nothing between 1 and p is divisible by p except for p. So what we get then is that a to the power of p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. But uh, I just want to show you what the proof looks like when we specialize it to this case. What we get is that p minus 1 factorial is congruent to the product of the k's, where k is from 1 to p minus 1. And if you know the proof of Euler's congruence, what you can do is you can multiply through all these uh, multiplicands by a, where a is any anything such that p does not divide a, which is equivalent to gcd of a and p is equal to 1 since p is prime. So we get k equals to 1 through p minus 1 and this is congruent to a to the p minus 1 times the product of k equals to 1 to p minus 1 of k. And what we get then is that we can cancel out these from this side in fact, uh, what we can write it as is, is the following, this as a to the p minus 1 times p minus 1 factorial. That, that makes it a bit more transparent. So there are two ways we can do this. One is to simply cancel out p minus 1 factorial from both sides since p doesn't divide that product, so it's invertible. And we get a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. The other way is to use Wilson's theorem which says that p minus 1 is factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod p for any prime p, including 2. Uh, so we, we still get the same result, but we just get the negative version of it, which is negative a to the p minus 1 is congruent to negative 1 mod p, which is the same as a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. Same thing either way. Um, and the last thing that I want to mention is that we can multiply both sides by a to get a to the p is congruent to a mod p. And this is not just true if GCD of a and p is equal to 1. This is true even if p divides a, because then both sides are just 0. Okay, so uh, this is the second form of Fermat's Little Theorem, which is equivalent to the original. So the two forms are a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p if p does not divide a, and a to the p is congruent to a mod p for all integers a, even if a is not co-prime to p. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.